Hey everyone, so we're on chapter 4-6 now, and this is actually one of the most important chapters of this entire class, and it's it's a little bit difficult to understand conceptually, so I think I actually will discuss uh, how, discuss a little bit about the conceptual side of bases and dimensions in this video. Before we start though, I do want to I do want to point out that, and some of you guys might have already noticed this, but I do have old videos. Oh, this is still from the uh, previous color. So I have old videos, uh, and if so, if you're watching this, then you should I should have already changed my website to reflect a new layout, and there should be a section uh, called old videos, and you'll notice that I have like a bunch of videos through like chapter six one, I think, and the, the, the video on bases, I think, is actually decent, if I recall correctly. Um, but yeah, so there's a, the videos on bases. Um, and I think everything up to chapter 6-1. So some of them are good. Some of them are not as good. I, actually, I don't remember. I recorded those a while ago at this point. And... Uh, I remember kids kids that semester told me that they were helpful so it does it, does, it, it the quality might be a little it might be harder to hear it might be harder to see because I'm like recording myself with a phone on a chalkboard but it, it should be fine and the video on bases should help you understand a little bit of what's going on additionally once you watch this video you should go back to four uh, the 4.4 video on finding a spanning set and I don't exactly remember which video this is. I think it might be the second 4.4 video. And what I actually did in that video was I actually found a basis for uh, the vector space. And so, so yeah, so that's another example. So once you watch this video, I encourage you guys to go back to this video, the 4.4 video, and rewatch it. And notice how it is eerily consistent with how you find a basis. And speaking of which let's transition into that then what is a basis right so why is the video in 4.4 why did i actually find a basis when i was trying to find a spanning set well that's because a basis is a set of vectors that one are linearly independent so watch the four or five videos if you don't know what linearly independent means uh, or how to find vectors that are linearly independent. And two, well, vectors, uh, the set of vectors need to span the vector space. Okay, so a basis of a vector space, right? So this is a basis of a vector space is a set of vectors that span the vector are, are linearly independent and they span the vector space. So for example, if we have R2, which you can think of as the XY plane, right? What is a basis for R2? Well, it, 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 it almost seems comical to discuss this, but a basis for R2 can be this vector, which is one zero, and then this vector, which is zero one. Right, because obviously they're linearly independent. Because for them to be not linearly independent, they'd have to be lying on top of each other, and then you know with different scalars. But it's fine. So they have to be either pointing in the exact same or exact opposite directions. So you see that was zero one one zero. They're linearly independent, and they span R two. Why is that? Because notice if I pick this point out here. All right, let's say this point. Uh, it looks like this is like one comma two. Right. What is this point? This point is actually equal to one times one comma zero plus two times zero comma one, right? And you see that, oh, I actually use one zero zero one because there are a basis and I can express every point in the XY plane as one zero uh, as some combination of one zero zero one and so that's what a basis means it just means that in this vector space i can express every point in this vector space as 
some scalar times one of the bases plus another scalar times another one of the bases, right? And so that's what a basis is, just conceptually. And so R2, uh, you can actually visualize it really easily. And so uh, we actually call 1001 the standard basis of R2. Um, I won't cover more of this. I, we're not going to get super into the theory behind this. So, okay, how do you find bases of a vector space? So let's do this pro following example then. So I want to find the basis of all three by three uh, for find the basis for all. Okay, maybe I need to word this. Find the basis for the set of three by three symmetric matrices. All right, so I wanna find a basis that spans essentially all three by three symmetric matrices and the, the yeah, and, and so it spans all three by three symmetric matrices and they're linearly independent from one another. Okay, so these two are by far you need to keep these in mind always when you're dealing with bases, okay? And so how do we do that? Well, let's just, again, let's write down what some symmetric matrices look like. So they kind of look like this, right? They look like one, two, three. Oh, then I, that needs to be a two, three, okay? Uh, this guy on the diagonal can be anything. So let's make this, I guess, a four, why not? And then uh, this has to be five, then this has to be five, um, Okay, I, uh, this entry right here can be anything. I'm just gonna call it five. It doesn't have to be five. But if this guy is five, then this guy down here in the three, two entry must be five. And then finally, this last entry in the three, three position could be anything. I'm just gonna call it six. Okay, that's fine. That works. Uh, what else? I can do like one, zero, one, um, four, uh, negative 13, negative 13, zero, right? I can have zero, 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 one, one, two, two, three, three, right? That works. And yeah, exactly. so that's that's what just any three by three symmetric matrix looks like. Okay. And let's just, let's just put real here. It doesn't matter. Let's just deal with real numbers, which we pretty much do this entire semester. Okay. So, all right. I have a three by three. So I need to find a basis for the set of three by three real symmetric matrices. Uh, here's some examples. So now remember, we, I need to, I need to find a general, I need to find a general like version of a three by three symmetric matrix that only has like variables in it, and that only has unknowns in it. Okay. And so how do we do that? Well, all right. So let's 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 create our three by three symmetric matrix. Uh, this first entry in the top left can be anything. So I'll just call it A, right? And all right, let's go on to this next next entry. Well, this entry. Uh, to the right of a it can also be anything so I'll be I'll call it B But what what's the problem when I call that B? Well It forces this guy here to be B as well, right? It forces this 2 1 entry to be also B Agreed because that's what a symmetric matrix is right if you make the rows into columns. It's the same matrix So all right That's fine. I can make then this one three entry I can make it C and okay so the one three entry is C and yeah so what does that force that forces this entry then in the three one position to also be C okay what's next uh, I have this guy on the two two diagonal to be anything it's D it doesn't force anything to be anything so that's fine all right uh, now I have E in the 2, 3 entry, and that forces then this guy down here to be also be E. And then finally, I have F. And this is actually every, we actually have just encompassed every real symmetric matrix. Because I can let A be anything, I can let B be anything, I can let C be any real number, D, E, F, all can be real numbers, right? So this is the most general form of a 3 by 3 symmetric matrix. And so what's next? Well, now remember what we did in the 4-4 video. Uh, I extract then each individual uh, unknown. 
and that is multiplied by some matrix. So for example, this is A multiplied by one zero 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 zero, right? Because the only entry that has an A in it is this top left entry, okay? And then what else? All right, now I need to add B times, well, what, what is B? It's zero one zero one zero 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 right because b is in the one two entry and the two one entry and we notice that oh those are multiplied by one okay so we have to do this for all of them and we have to go through f so c times uh, zero zero one zero 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 one zero zero plus d times zero 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 one zero 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 plus e times zero 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 one zero one zero plus f times zero 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 one okay and what do I do well now I take these guys I take each individual matrix and I put them into a set of matrices all right so now consider the set of matrices that is one zero 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 one zero one zero 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 I'll stop saying them so this and then okay what else and finally we have Zoom out a little bit. Okay. And so I now have the set of six matrices, and I know for sure that they span. I know that for sure that they span all three by three symmetric matrices just because of how I constructed the set, right? Because I went through, created the most general three by three matrix. That's the most general three by three symmetric matrix, real symmetric matrix. And then I extracted out each independent unknown, right? Each unknown was extracted out of there. And then I ended up with six matrices, and these are my six matrices. And I claim that this is a basis. So what does it have to be? Well, remember, a basis has to span, which we know it does because of how we created this guy. And the next step then, uh, so we know it spans. The second part is then they have to be linearly independent. And... How do we show that they're linearly independent? Well, they're matrices. So uh, one thing you can do is you can unravel the matrices. Essentially, I can take this matrix right here. All right, I can take this guy. I can turn it into a column vector that looks like one zero zero. Okay, so this is this is the first column, and I take the second column, and I take the third column. Right, so this is a nine by one column vector, and then this guy becomes zero one uh, zero one zero 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 right so I just take each column and I throw it into the matrix but the the thing with this is that so this is technically the correct way to do it it just takes a really long time because what you have to do then is you have to unravel all six matrices put them into a gigantic matrix. In this case, it would be nine by six, right? And then you'd have to make sure that the rank of that nine by six matrix ends up being six or that there's six pivots. Um, yeah, that works. You kind of can just eyeball this because really look at where this one is. All right, there's no other matrix that has a one in that position, right? Look at where these ones are. There are no other matrices that have ones in those positions and so forth. So there's no way that any one of these matrices can be a linear combination of the other ones. Because, look, if I just pick on this first matrix, right? So I have a one in the top left position. But here, this is a zero. This is a zero. This fourth matrix also has a zero up there. That's a zero and that's a zero. Like none of them can, you can't add a bunch of zeros to get ones. That's what I'm trying to say in the top left. And this is true for every single entry of every single uh, of each basis matrix here. So 
they are linearly independent. You kind of can't like I'm, this is really hand wavy what I'm doing right now. It's technically not the correct way to do this. Um, but for the sake of this exercise, I'm just saying that, look, you, you, this, we're done. We're done. These guys are literally independent. Um, to formally show it, you have to do this unraveling crap. Um, you have to write these guys into column vectors and do the whole thing, uh, put them in a matrix. But for the sake of this exercise here, we're done. We know that it spans. We know that they're literally independent. And so this set of six matrices, um, this is the basis for symmetric uh, or real symmetric three by three matrices. All right. And the last question is that you want to ask, what's the dimension? What's the dimension of what is the dimension of this subspace, essentially? Because the three by three real symmetric matrices lie inside a larger vector space that is all three by three real matrices, right? So they don't have to, so the larger vector space doesn't have to be just symmetric matrices. And then we have a subspace that can only be symmetric matrices. And so what we want to do then is we want to describe the dimension of the subspace. And the dimension is just the number of entries in the matrix, uh, the number of matrix entries in the basis. All right. So in our case, our dimension is six because I have one, two, three, four, five, six matrices in this basis. All right. And so there's six linearly independent vectors. And so the dimension of my subspace is six. And this is the dimension of uh, three by three real symmetric matrices. And so this is how you find this is how you find a matrix. Uh, this is how you find the basis for symmetric matrices. And in general, this applies to any type of vector space. It can be like polynomials. All right. Uh, so you may be asked to find a basis for, let's say, uh, even polynomials of degree three or less or something like that. Uh, you just need to create the most general polynomial that satisfies that and then extract each independent uh, unknown variable. All right. And so, yeah, so this is for six. Yep. And in the next video, I'll be doing a slightly harder example that includes subspaces as well as vector spaces, uh, as well as bases. So.